Hello, the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsychologist, technical agnostic, and 40 and skeptic. I'm doing this particular uh, clip because of the fact that I've been um, uh, doing a little bit of uh, my work, of course, of, crit uh, of critiquing and uh, further embellishing on parts uh, done by Penn and Teller bullshit and the like. Um, and of course, you know, I had a few critiques for Bill Nye on a couple of things which he overlooked. Um, or could have done uh, a little bit better on. Um, let me put it this way. My concern is, um, and uh, I figure it's about time that I brought forward my a proper evaluation, um, a, so not a skeptical look at skepticism, but more like a skeptical look at skeptical debunking. Um, and this is more so um, where I evaluate my colleagues' methods, uh, current methods of uh, doing, uh, or a lot of the popular methods of debunking um, and uh, you know of, of of getting rid of bullshit and pseudoscience, and uh, whether they go far enough in a few areas, and whether in some areas there could be some improvement, and what works, of course, you know what works, what doesn't, how this could be better improved. Okay, um, the first episode, the first uh, show I'm going to tackle is of course Penn and Teller bullshit because they are a uh, a pilot um, in my book. Uh, they are an attempt to create a single debunking show which covers every topic under the sun. Um, they're effectively doing what I'm trying to do on YouTube, which is to become a repository for all information. Um, and they're doing not too bad at it. You know, to, to give them credit, they have been able to successfully debunk large chunks of our societal values. They've been able to debunk the paranormal with relative ease. Um, they screwed up. Um, the, you know, and I'll get to their foul-ups in a minute. Um, let me think, what else? Uh, they've had a few issues with capitalism and, you know, um... But the point is that you know at least at least they do bring in experts uh, for the most part. Um, I do wish in some areas they would bring in more scientists as opposed to, um, and this is not just uh, this is not just old stuff like um, like this is modern day uh, type stuff which does seem a little bit odd. Um, for example, uh, a while back they had a um, uh, for I can't remember which episode it was. It was one of the season five ones. Uh, they were debunking something or other and. Um, that was it. It was the electromagnetic fields issue. Uh, oh wait, no, actually, scratch that. They did eventually bring in a doctor for that one, so that that circumvented that. Um, okay, well, I've um, the only issues where, in particular, um, where they've uh, had um, issues of not bringing in enough um, uh, issues with, you know, not bringing in quite enough data or actually properly looking at the data as to which species are actually endangered, not just talking about the 46 success stories, um, were the um, going into greater detail as to which species were actually endangered on the Endangered Species Act and more appropriate techniques as to how to handle them. You know, if you're going to do a debunking show, it would be a good idea to not just say, like, this is bullshit, but to say, this is bullshit and here's a better way to improve it. Constructive criticism of bullshit, um, you know, uh, by presenting a better alternative, can... Um, help entice people to get their uh, out of their bullshit mindsets. Another thing which uh, kind of uh, ticks me off a little bit is the fact that uh, Penn & Teller have a rather extensive research team who no doubt go through a large chunk of papers and um, what's funny about it is the fact that the um, every single one of the episodes where they do a, a large chunk of this stuff they um, they quote their um, you know, they, uh, they quote the stuff, like they quote studies for one thing or another, like uh, they'll have experts coming on for psychology and quoting studies uh, in relation to um, aggression venting and that sort of thing. Or they'll have uh, studies in relation to uh, um, the, uh, you know, people not getting enough sedative in death penalty situations or the like. Um, the thing which really bugs me about this, and the, not the fact that they're bringing up studies, I'm glad that they're actually doing it, but the thing which bugs the crap out of me is that they're not actually providing full references at the end of every episode. Now I know this does seem like a little odd, and I, actually this is a, um, and the thing of course is that Penn and Teller are not alone in this. Um, they're um, actually, Bill Nye, to his credit, uh, in the eyes of Nye, has actually managed to circumvent that because he actually does put those we um, references up on his website, and he gives a reference to his website, so this way you can find the references directly from there. So, you know, to his credit, Bill Nye takes care of that. Um, but I think Penn and Teller... Um, unless, of course, they have already done that on their website, at which point I'm unaware of it, but I checked Showtime a while back and I couldn't find anything uh, for some of the references to their earlier episodes. Um, you know, I do wish that, uh, like I said, I would, I would 
uh, prefer that in a lot of cases they would actually double check with scientists on all sides of the issue. They have corrected that since the environmentalism episode, uh, not in environmentalism, but in a few other areas. Um, they should be taking a look more so at, you know, the technicals pertaining to endangered species, the technicals pertaining to certain aspects of pseudoscience, which may actually require more than a half hour show to get into. Um, you know, do two parters, that sort of thing. It might, you know, sometimes covering something over more than one episode, um, maybe more, um, maybe more beneficial in the long run. Not just so this way people can understand it's bullshit, but can also understand why it's bullshit and learn how to extrapolate that to other areas. You know, it's the same reapplying of skills. Um, the other issue, again, is including of the references. And the reason I stress this, and again, I wish that most uh, popular science TV shows and the like would actually have in their credits at the, um, you know, at the very ending, a list of uh, either a website where you can go find the info. Uh, Penandteller.com uh, has an access to bullshit, but that's directly to Showtime. Um, it just goes to the main Showtime page. It doesn't really do anything in terms of that. Um, the, uh, the other thing, is, again, like I said, I w um, or that they provide a list of references to books, papers, um, you know, other reading material, which people can go to to get further in-depth material that the show might not necessarily be able to cover. I am aware of the fact that, that, um, that, uh, uh, that, Pen uh, that Penn and Teller bullshit, uh, that National Geographic, uh, Naked Science, or Mythbusters, or other groups are limited in the amount of time they actually have available for... Um, you know, I'm aware of the fact that they, they, they um, you know, are uh, they are limited in the amount of time that they actually have available to cover a large chunk of de uh, of, of detailed info and a large chunk of it may be too complicated uh, to be covered on a popular level. That being said, I do think there should be at least references provided so this way people can actually go and look at that if they are more interested. Um, the reason I say this is because of the fact that I've actually been, um, uh, when I watched Penn and Teller's circumcision episode, I actually tried to find these studies in the New England Journal of Medicine. Um, which said that circumcision actually uh, reduced the risk of AIDS because I wanted to see what the uh, methodology they were using is just to, um, since Penn and Teller claimed that they debunked the medical claims on it. Well, my question with that was, well, just because you have two different types of studies, uh, one may be better than the other, but you don't know when they're quoted secondhand which, uh, which one is better than the other unless you read the science that yourself and uh, take a look at the methodology of the paper and, uh, you know, under and understand how they did it. So this way you can understand how the research was flawed. Um, and since I haven't been able to find either of these two papers, it would have been very helpful for Penn and Teller to have posted the links to those papers, you know, full um, peer-reviewed re uh, reference uh, in APA format in the credits. So this way I could have caught that and would have been able to uh, go, look it, look, go look it up online or look it up uh, through my local library. Um, but again, um, this would have been extremely beneficial. Um, okay, other things. Um, the um, This is one thing which, this is just more of a personal preference issue. Um, I understand anger, and I understand the necessity to, um, you know, to convey things on a popular level that people can understand. That being said, I think that the use of the word asshole um, is a little bit dicey in Penn and Teller, uh, in Penn and Teller's bullshit. And I want to make this uh, perfectly clear as to why. Um, the okay. When Penn and Teller call someone an asshole after they have spouted bullshit. And after they've debunked what the person has said, that would be appropriate because at that point you're, uh, you know, it, it, you're using it as a char as a substitute to call them uh, to prevent from calling them a charlatan or a quack. The problem is when you call them an asshole before you do the debunk, um, and, and especially in light of the fact of uh, uh, of knocking off the cuff and the like, um, largely because of the fact that the um, uh, the the reason I say this is largely because of the fact that it could be construed in some cases as poisoning the well. This is a critical thinking fallacy, which is a subset of ad hominem attack. Um, and again, it, like I said, um, again, purely for the points of trying to stay logical and, you know, since the show is, uh, claims, uh, even in its own credits, that it's promoting, at least in season five, that it's promoting uh, reason, intellect, and logic, um, I would appreciate um, Penn and Teller trying to reduce the amount of not so much reduce the amount of swearing, just careful about how and when they use their swearing. So this way they're not um, crossing over into critical thinking fallacies in the process. You know, just purely for logic's sake. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much covers it for now. Um, my more specific complaints I've had, I've ta uh, I've talked about where I, uh, in the clips, um, uh, read the Endangered Species Act, read the death penalty, Penn and Teller script big time in relation to environmentalism. Um, I, I've already criticized them on their lack of proper debunk of the scientific research into uh, ESP and parapsychology. Um, what else? 
like I said, if it, if I have a problem with Penn and Teller, I probably commented on it already. 